So you're an attorney and you've decided to go out on your own. Now what? You need a plan and you're not alone. Join expert host Adriana Linares and her distinguished guests on New Solo. Tune into the lively conversation as they share insights and information about how to successfully run your law firm here on Legal Talk Network. Okay, it's time for another episode of New Solo on Legal Talk Network. I'm Adriana Linares. I'm a legal technology trainer and consultant. I help lawyers and law firms use technology better. I'm back at the San Diego County Bar Association again, so I'm going to interview a new solo. And when I say new, I mean new, but he's smart and sharp, and he's going to tell us a bunch of things that he's learned on his path to becoming a solo practitioner. Before we get started, we want to thank our sponsors. Nexa, formerly known as Answer One, is a leading virtual receptionist and answering service provider for law firms. Learn more by giving them a call at 800-267-9371 or online at nexa.com. Thanks to our sponsor, Clio. Clio's cloud-based practice management software makes it easy for you to manage your law firm from intake to invoice. Try it for free at clio.com, and that's C-L-I-O dot com. Want to make sure and thank our sponsor, Law Clerk. Law Clerk is where attorneys go to hire freelance lawyers. Visit lawclerk.legal to learn how to increase your productivity and your profits by working with talented freelance lawyers. Thanks to our sponsor, Ross. Ross Intelligence, the legal research platform that leverages AI to get to the heart of legal issues fast. Go to rossintelligence.com for a 14-day free trial. Okay. Hey, Philip. How's it going? It's going pretty good. Thanks for coming in today. No problem. Thank you for having me. But you're here a lot. I am here a lot. Yeah, I try to, when I need to get work done downtown or come to the court, that's always, I spend a day here at the county bar. Yeah, I want to talk about that just real quick because if you're a member, for those of you who are listening and not members of the San Diego County Bar, or if you are a member of the San Diego County Bar and just don't know this, the offices are a beautiful workspace for lawyers who either need a quick place to hang out, make some copies before they go to court, or like Philip, who's going to talk to us a little bit more about this, um, use this basically like an office, Mm -hmm. right? So, oh, and and I should also put a pitch in for myself on the human member benefit. Mm -hmm. So when you join the bar, you get my technology consulting services for free. Otherwise, you have to pay me my hourly rate, which isn't that bad, but, you know, it's not free unless you're a member of the San Diego County Bar. So when you come here, Philip, you've got, you bring your laptop, mm. you bring your business needs. There's yep. a copier, a printer, Wi-Fi, coffee, snacks. I get you dragging me into tech meetings <laughs> and giving me breakfast. That's always good. I'm glad you come to those. I mean, they're kind of helpful, right? Yeah, they're interesting. It's like I like hearing other lawyers' perspectives on what they use or how they use stuff. Or sometimes they bring up questions that you're like, oh, I never thought of that or so it's just good because technology is important. It is. And um, I'll explain real quick. So on top of the regular programming that I do and content development, when I'm here one week out of every month, I have a sort of open breakfast with the member technology officer or lunch with, and it's an open session. And one day, Philip was sitting in the lobby and I said, hey, do you want to come join us? There's free breakfast burritos. And I love it because they do come and ask me questions. But what I really like is how the lawyers help each other, like you just explained. Mm -hmm. Um, All right. So let's go back to you. Uh, You're a member of the San Diego County Bar and you're a new lawyer. Yes. Brand spanking new. Still got that new lawyer smell. Yeah. (laughs) How relieved were you three months ago when you passed, when you heard that you passed the bar? Well, this was a year and almost a year. Okay. 2018. 2018, you passed the bar. Yeah. Then why did you tell me you were been a new solo for three months? Because I worked at a firm after I passed the bar last year Oh, for okay. a little bit, but I went solo three months ago. Okay. But that's still like really fast to go solo, fresh out of law school, yeah. basically fresh out of law school. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you went to law school here in San Diego. Thomas Jefferson. Yep. Great. Where are you from? Uh, new Jersey, originally. Why did you pick to come to San Diego? A couple of friends from college who lived here, I had brought up that I wanted to go to law school and they said, well, why don't you look at coming out to San Diego. So I looked at San Diego and Thomas Jefferson at the time when they had the big, beautiful building. Yeah. Blew me away. Um, And I said, well, yeah, this looks great. They gave me a good scholarship. I liked the faculty and I loved it. I loved every year that I was there and it was a good experience for me. It was either that or New York and I was tired of winters and Scraping ice off my car, right. so yeah, I was gonna say certainly the weather. Is yeah, the a weather helps as well. Yeah, which for the record, it's always cold here. 
So remember, I'm from Florida, New Orleans, and I think it's always cold. Although these Santa Ana winds we've been having. It's been brutal. <laughs> See, and now you think it's hot. That's another added benefit of the bar center is air conditioning. Right. So if you have an apartment that doesn't have air conditioning like I do. Oh, right. The, another member benefit. We should put that on the member benefits list. Air conditioning. List. Air conditioning. Um, okay, so you went to a firm. Was it a big firm or a small firm? Uh, it was a medium-sized firm here in downtown. And had you always had the aspiration to go out on your own, or did you decide— were you, did you come out of law school? You're like, I'm going to go to work for a law firm forever. Or did you say to yourself, I'm going to go work for a while at a law, at a law firm and then go out on my own? How'd it happen? Uh, I had always had the vision to go out on my own. Um, before law school, me and my family, I worked in the restaurant business um, because I graduated college right around the 2008. So the economic downturn and uh, depression or whatever you want to call it. So there was no jobs out there for college grads, and I sort of just stumbled into the restaurant biz. I was interested in it. Worked there for five years. Me and my family opened a restaurant oh, wow. for four years. So I think I got bit by the entrepreneur bug and nice. really kind of being your own business owner and realizing that even though it's stressful, it's exciting, and having that freedom to kind of do what you want and be creative with how you build your business. So when I got to law school, I, I started to always think I want to continue my own business or be my own boss. And throughout law school, I always planned and, you know, I was that nerd who would sit on demos and Excellent. webinars about this really? program. Yeah. I was, I was that guy who would just sit there on webinars and learn about different le uh, legal tech and, yeah. you know, is this program better than this program? Okay. If I were to open my own firm, what would I use? Um, so, you know, I sat on all the demos for Clio and wow. Rocket Matter and Smokeball mm -hmm. and, uh, what's the other one? Practice Panther. Yeah, um, my case is all. Uh, there are so I, many of them. Yeah, right? I went through every single one of them, saw which one I liked. Yeah, and and when I got out, I went into working for a firm because I I wasn't quite ready for the to go out solo. Um, and this is sort of where freelancing comes in. I had been able to freelance on the side to save money as startup capital for my own firm. So after that. a while, I was able to have enough to say, okay, I can do this and go out on my own. They didn't encourage you to do these, this research and this sort of looking into practice management programs and technology in law school, did they? No. Oh, rats. No. I was hoping you'd say, yes, they did. No. That was part of my impetus. But it sounds like you just had it in you to get smart and start thinking about how to do that. Yeah, I think once you start to get down the rabbit hole of legal technology, I mean, there's a lot out there. And you can spend a lot of time figuring out which is best and which is sort of a waste of time or which is really efficient. So that's, I think, sort of how I started. It was always, well, what practice management software would I like? And then, you know, you look at research mm. tools and then you look at other tools like virtual receptionists. Okay, well, if I were to start a small firm and I didn't want to pay for a receptionist, who could, you know, it, yeah. you start to, it becomes like a hobby of looking for what are the solutions to start a firm efficiently without spending way too much money, especially as a new solo. Yeah, and it's so doable these days. I say it all the time on this podcast that 10 and 12 years ago, I was having very different conversations mm -hmm. with solos, and it was always in the thousands of dollars. Now it's like barely in the hundred, mm -hmm. couple hundreds. The reason you and I got to talking, other than the fact that we're bar friends and you know I try to help you and you try to help me when I've got questions about what it's like to be a new solo, is that you had mentioned that you freelanced, which you referenced a moment ago, mm -hmm. and you use Law Clerk as a resource for freelancing. So you're the contracted attorney that someone might hire. Yes. Before you tell me about Law Clerk, though, on the side, you mentioned earlier that you are comfortable with the gig economy because during law school, you also did freelance work, but through Upwork. Yeah, there's a Upwork was the main one. I would try to do as much contract work as possible. People always told me in law school I was sort of the hustler who was always trying to figure out how to yeah. make money and good. Uh, <laughs> Sounds like it worked. Yeah, it worked. On, um, so I used Upwork. They were pretty good, but if you've been on Upwork, you know it's all sorts of things. Yeah, and it's sort of pick and choose. Hopefully, there's something on there that you could mm -hmm. you could get in and. Uh, I got some good projects off of it, but Law Clerk has definitely been more consistent. Well, and, now that you're a licensed lawyer, yeah. right, and you can actually do legal work as opposed yep. to legal research and sort of paralegal-like work through Upwork, you're actually able yeah. to do legal work. And Law Clerk, I only started really getting into it maybe, I think I started right after I passed the bar. And I was doing freelancing right after I, started, after I passed the bar. 
And it didn't really pick up for a while, but I was doing it on my own as well. I had my own website and stuff like oh, that. Oh, cool. That was no my kidding. Business. Yeah. Uh, freelance attorney for hire. Do you still have com. it? Yeah. Still there. Still go check it out. Yeah, cool. Um, has my rates and everything I do. Shameless plug, but okay. No, that's why you're here. <laughs> that's great. So then I, it became more, I get a lot of stuff through Law Clerk now, mm-hmm. which is nice because the way Law Clerk is set up is they have to fund the project before you can start a project, right. which is a peace of mind if you're the contract attorney. Yeah. You don't have to worry about it. I've had horror stories of, you know, when I didn't use law clerk and I went out on my own, uh-huh. you'd have to chase someone down for money and, you know, they give you an excuse after an excuse. And right. then you're just kind of waiting on big invoices. But law clerk makes it nice so you know that the money's there and as soon right. as the project's over and it's all complete, they're going to disperse the money to you. That's great. And you obviously get to pick and choose the projects that you want. Yes. Okay. Great. Yeah. Um, what type of law are you practicing? Uh, mostly business and estate planning. Excellent. And then when you take, so you have your private practice too. Correct. And burgeoning law practice that I know is going to be very successful. So you've got that and you've got law clerk mm-hmm. and you've got your website where you might still get some work from. Mm-hmm. Any other resources you want to make sure everyone else knows about or ideas for how to continue to grow your business and get experience and, you know, make money? No, those are the two things. And, and I did freelance for a couple of reasons. One, because I think it's a good way if you're a new attorney to get experience yeah. under someone's tutelage with like low pressure. And I would say that's one of the hardest things about when you go solo is all the pressure is on you to figure out how to do things. And when you do freelance, you have the comfort of knowing I'm doing a project for someone, they're going to look it over. And I can learn something as well. So I've had projects that I've taken on that I was just genuinely interested in the project or the question. And this was recent. Um, And I was talking to the attorney about it. I was like, yeah, I mean, it was just interesting to learn about this subject. Low pressure. It's not my client. But also, if you're a new attorney, it's a great way to make some money on the side. And if you're looking to start your own firm, it's a great way to pay your bills in the sense so that your law firm isn't so hamstrung for, oh, every dollar that comes in, I have to pay out to myself in salary. Otherwise, I can't make rent this month. Um, So that helps a lot as well. And that's been, it's been a nice symbiotic relationship where the freelance frees up the law firm for other uh, investments such as advertising, marketing, or or virtual receptionist or something that helps build your business. Oh, that's great. And um, are you concerned at all about the new AB5 rule? No, I'm not because... (laughs) Hold on. (laughs) That was a softball for me. So explain real quick. I did not know what that was, obviously, but Philip brought it up to me. So I pretended like I knew, but you can explain it and then answer it. So AB5 is a new law that was just signed in um, based on the Dynamex decision about independent contractors in the state of California. Um, And they came up with a three-prong test. But the big one is the second prong that is really going to screw up a lot of things. And it's basically says that if you, you can't hire someone as an independent contractor, if they work in the same ordinary course of what your business does. So when you look at it through that lens, it's very hard to figure out who would be an independent contractor and how would that affect your business. But luckily AB five exempts people with licenses from the state of California. So if you're a freelance attorney, Good. you don't have to worry about, well, if I hire this contract attorney, do I have to treat him like an employee under AB5? Well, you don't have to worry about that. Oh, wow. That's so, very helpful. Oh, like Uber drivers, on the other hand, that'll be a whole different issue. But oh at least freelance attorneys, we don't have to worry about that. Okay, you're safe for a minute until a new law comes along. Mm-hmm. No, but that's good. Okay, that's very helpful because I'm sure, like you said, you actually mentioned to me, people ask you that all the time when you say, I'm a lawyer with my own practice and I do freelance work. So that's super helpful. Mm-hmm. Well, cool. Before I ask you about the technology that you ended up picking and how you've, you know, the infrastructure for your firm, let's take a quick break and listen to some messages from some sponsors. Law Clerk is where attorneys go to hire freelance lawyers. Whether you need a research memo or a complicated appellate brief, our network of freelance lawyers have every level of experience and expertise. Signing up is free and there are no monthly fees. Only pay the flat fee price you set. Use rebate code NEWSOLO to get a $100 Amazon gift card when you complete your next project. Learn more at lawclerk.legal. Imagine what you could do with an extra eight hours per week. That's how much time legal professionals save with Clio, the world's leading practice management software. 
With intuitive time tracking, billing, and matter management, Clio streamlines everything you do to run your practice from intake to invoice. Try Clio for free and then get a 10% discount for your first six months when you sign up with the code NEWSOLO10. That's new solo one zero, And do that at Clio.com, C-L-I-O.com. Okay, so that was um, pretty exciting for me to hear that you did all that research while you were still in law school. For mm. me, a lot of lawyers, especially new lawyers, come to me once they're done and got their law- license and then you know, what should I do? Where should I hang my um, cloud hat, so to speak? So what did you end up picking and what's your infrastructure look like? Because you're pretty tech savvy. Yeah, I mean, that was one of my goals is definitely to make sure, and this is sort of a piece of advice for all solo firms is, and I think I read it from a book put out by Practice Panther, be ready for when the business starts to pick up because it's hard to figure out what to do afterwards when you're so busy with work. So true. It's better to say, okay, well, when this comes up and I have this many clients or this much business, what's my next step? What's the next thing I'm going to implement? So I made sure I I sort of had a list of different tech things I would go with. Uh, First off was obviously Smokeball. I looked at all of them and Smokeball, for some reason, just blew me away. It was, especially as a solo small firm, their document automation the time tracking is great. Um, I love the fact that whenever I open a document, it tracks the time, whether I bill the client for that or not. You're still tracking the time. It's just nice to know, and you can at least see where your time is being spent on stuff. It's also a nice benefit when they see all those emails that you could be billing. Mm-hmm. You write them off as a nice gratuity. Well, I don't bill emails for you, and that's cool. they see the value in that. So Smokeball for me, I did have to switch. I was a Mac guy before yeah. that. And Rats. it was that was the biggest thing that held me up about Smokeball for the longest time. I was like, you know, I have a Mac laptop, I have an iPhone. I was completely in the Apple universe. And I was like, man, I really don't want to switch. And then finally, when I went solo, I said, all right, I'm going to get a Surface Pro. And I went with that and haven't looked back. So, you know, that's such a funny discussion that I have with lawyers all the time, because when you're Mac, you want to stick to Mac. And mm-hmm. when you're PC, you want to switch to Mac. Yeah. <laughs> But um, And there are very few programs that are quite so specific toward a platform. Smokeball is one of them. NetDocuments that I love and tout all the time is much better on a PC than Mm -hmm. it is on a Mac. So I've had a couple of attorneys that switched to PC because it's important to your business. I mean, that's the thing. I, I guess that's the message I'm trying to send is, I get that you're a young lawyer, a a young man, and Mac is everything, and that's the world you knew. But I really applaud you for just looking at that the resource and saying, I got to make the switch. It's just the smartest thing Mm. to do. And maybe someday, you know, you switch back or Smokeball makes a product that's viable on a Mac. I'll tell you, I cannot stand when somebody tells me they're running parallels on their Mac just for one specific program Mm. or their main program. I mean, why go through all that? Just Doc, it's tech. It's a computer, not a wife. Yeah, a I was just gonna say you could. I, I have you smoke ball on parallels. It's all right. It's it, not as it, fast. Yeah, and it, the switching back and forth becomes a pain. And it's awful. You, you know, you're opening up a thousand different windows, and what window am I in? It's and awful. Are you I, opening Microsoft Outlook in your <laughs> Mac, or are you opening it in your Windows parallel? So going to Surface Pro. And then just you know getting a couple external monitors made it that much better to create oh, so- a workstation. Good advice, and I'm glad to hear it because it just I just say to lawyers sometimes, wow, you're making this really hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, all right, so you got a Surface Pro, which I also have, and I absolutely love. So mm-hmm. you like it then? I love it. Yeah, it's great. It's the lightest laptop I've ever used. Oh, awesome. It's nice and portable to bring with you into yeah. court, into meetings. and. Do you ever turn it and use it like a tablet with the pen? Yeah, I've used it like okay, that. I, I'll you know If I'm sitting on the couch, I'll use it as a tablet. And yeah. You know, review documents or, I don't know, do look at other things that I need to, low effort stuff that I can do at night. Um, I've taken it into client meetings. I've taken it into seminars and written down yeah, stuff. And I I, I've always been a, a handwritten guy. I, for as much as I love tech, I was the old school guy who sat there with my fountain pen and actually wrote out all my in notes. In law school. Yeah, in, in law school because I read that the research is, and this is yes. a tip for all law students. Good one. Handwrite your notes because there's a better brain hand connection and you'll actually remember the information better. I've always heard that too. And I've always heard that dictating, which a lot of young lawyers don't think to do, don't want to do, also makes you just a better orator and communicator. Mm. Um, And I'll give a tip. 
that I gave to someone today that I think is critical for any business person, regardless of what level you're in. But this is one of those things where I just want to send so many young lawyers, actually not even young lawyers, even older lawyers that I see giving a presentation or talking, go to Toastmasters. Mm -hmm. I think I went to Toastmasters for seven years when I was a little younger. I wish I was still going today. Um, I've told someone here at the bar that we should create a Toastmasters chapter inside the bar because it's just such a great skill. So that whole idea of not being completely tech focused all the time can really create some great skills and some good habits. What other technology tools do you use that are important to you? Um, I just started with uh, Smith AI. Oh, you did? Yep. I like them. The comfort and just the ease of, it also feels really cool when you have a receptionist taking your call. Tell us what it is. So Smith AI is a virtual receptionist. And the website is smith.ai. Smith.ai. Mm -hmm. And you can sign up for a free trial. That's what I did. And I just rolled it into a full plan. But yeah, they, they take your calls. They screen your calls as well. So you're not paying for every single call, which is nice. So if it's a sales call that wasn't prompted or anything, they won't charge you for that. Um, but it's nice. They they take a message. They send you an email. If it's important, they'll patch you through. Um, and it's nice to know that you're not dropping any calls. And especially as a solo, it can be burdensome to always have to be picking up the phone. Yeah. Even as a non-solo, it can be burdensome. <laughs> yeah. And it just sounds more professional when someone picks up and says, you know, hello, welcome to, thank you for calling Arate Law. How can I help you? And then they say, oh, there's a receptionist here. Okay. And then they say something or they want to schedule a consult, Smith AI can do that as well if you use Calendly. Excellent. They'll go right into your Calendly and schedule it. And that's always a nice little surprise when you see like, oop, new consult popped up. Perfect. And it's already been taken care of. They took care of all the notes and stuff like that. So virtual receptionist, uh, if you're a new firm, like definitely look into it. I failed to ask you to tell us your last name, which I don't think you did. More yellow. So Philip Moriello, mm. and your law firm is called? Arate Law. Which I asked you about that before, so I'm going to ask you to tell our listeners where that came from. Arate Law. Well, Arate is a Greek philosophy for excellence in everything that you do. A-R-E-T-E? -E? Correct. So it's aratelaw.com, your website? Arate.law. Oh, got it. Okay. And it was a personal philosophy of one of my heroes, Theodore Roosevelt. Excellent. He's my favorite president. So I read about Arate um, in one of his autobiographies. So I was like, oh, that'd be a good name for a law firm. And it's a good philosophy as well yeah, to kind of put forward as a business model. I'd say. And as far as having chosen a cool name for your law firm, and you mentioned marketing earlier, did you get some marketing help building your website? Do you have a logo? Tell us a little bit about either what you did or where you are with that. Well, my logo, I believe I used Fiverr. Okay. Cool. Um, and I know a lot of people like to downplay Fiverr. F-I-V-E-R-R.com. I can never remember if it's two V's or two R's. <laughs> I think it's two R's. Try both. Yeah, I used Fiverr, and I got a nice logo out of it. And uh, yeah, I'd worked on that sort of also during law school, came up with the logo. and But I also designed websites and helped some attorneys with SEO in law school as sort you of did? a side gig. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're a nerd and a half. Yeah. So it's I okay. I learned it for myself, at least so I didn't have to pay someone else to do it. And then I started helping other attorneys do it. So, Did you I, do it in WordPress? I used Wix. Oh, okay. Um, I want to go to your website, but I keep spelling it wrong. A-R-E-T-E? A-R-E-T-E -E dot law. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Oh, and I like those colors. This looks lovely. This looks good. Oh, and you've got a chat. Okay, tell us about your chat service. Who does that? So that's through Wix as okay. well. And that's another integration I haven't opted for yet with Smith AI, you can actually have them respond to your chats. Oh, excellent. Uh, as of right now, it's just me responding to the chats. That's okay. Got, hey, baby steps, man. Okay. So you've got Smokeball, mm -hmm. Smith.ai, mm -hmm. your PC. What else? I'm trying to think of anything else. I Are just, you Office 365 or G Suite? Office 365. Okay, great. Yep. Outlook, all that. Mm -hmm. Any like um, little add-ons that you like? Do you use a password manager? Do you use any of those grammar tools? Grammarly. You do? Did you mm. pay for it? For a while, I did. I think I, pay, I paid for the year subscription, mainly because for me, and I've said this before on the show, so sorry if you have to hear it twice or maybe three times. When I type, it's very free flow. I don't want to think about apostrophes and sometimes capital letters and stuff. So afterwards, when I go to reread it, if it's long, I like the way Grammarly fixes those simple things. I mean, mm. I don't necessarily, I mean, although it does do a good job of recommending better 
verbiage sometimes. Okay. And then how about resources outside of technology? You're a solo practitioner and, Mm -hmm. you know, a big complaint that I hear from solos is they miss the camaraderie of being in a big firm or being able to walk down the hall and ask another attorney how this or that. Mm -hmm. So do you do that here in the bar? Yeah, I I chat with some of the other attorneys because you start to see if you hang around here enough, you start to see sort of the same people who come here. So you start to get to know them and they get to know you. Um, But one resource that I use because I work out of my own home office is this thing called Lawyer Slack. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't remember. Is Lawyer Smack or Lawyer Slack? Oh, I think it's Lawyer Smack. I thought it was the associate's mind, but maybe that's Keith Lee's. um, I'll look it up right now. Maybe that's his Twitter handle. Okay, but tell us about it while I'm pulling it up to make sure we send people to the right resource. <laughs> yeah, I think it's Lawyer Smack. <laughs> I always get be, I get confused because it's housed, if you ever heard the app of Slack. Yeah. It's on Slack, and uh, it's a resource where it's a big chat room with attorneys all over the country. It's the leading private community for lawyers, and you're a member. I'm a member, yeah. And do you remember what it costs? I think when I, I got a 20% discount when I signed up, but I think it's 135 a month. Or really? One, no, one thirty-five a year. Oh, okay. Sorry, Keith. I don't want to scare people off. Yeah, I was gonna say, wow. One thirty-five a year, and I think it's totally worth it. That's what I was gonna ask you. So, one, that's not that much money. No. And then um, it's totally worth it. So, what does that mean? What makes it worth it? What are you doing there? I first started using it as sort of like a listserv, sort of like here with the San Diego County Bar. How whenever you have a question, you always kind of just shoot out an email. Can anyone help me with this? Has anyone encountered this before? Um, So that's how I first started using it because they have all these different channels for all different practices and they have a solo small firm channel, which is very active where you can go in and say, Hey, I have a question. How would I do this? Does this look like a good client? And it's good to just have that resource to bounce off of people. You know, I'll, I'll go in there and say, Hey, this client contacted me and they have, this is their story. And then I'll have them some, you know, responses of like run very far away. Like don't even, (laughs) you know, drop that client or whatever. Um, But it's also good. I call it like my water cooler because there's all different channels for food or music or one called Chit Chat, which is just you chatting about anything. There's a good California channel, which is very active for uh, California attorneys. So it's my water cooler. And if you work solo and you just kind of want that camaraderie of people to talk Mm -hmm, to, mm -hmm. that's what I mostly use it for is just to chat with people. I still use it to bounce ideas off of people. And in fact, this past weekend was the Clio conference and a lot of them came out. Yeah. And because I live here and I was able to show them around and because we had chatted so much through this program, once you met them in person, it was like, oh, just seeing old friends again right. and hanging out with them. And I love that. So it's a great resource um, if you work by yourself to get out there and meet other attorneys. And and obviously it's good advice or I mean, it can't always be good advice. There might be occasionally bad advice, but you've got a place to go to get advice. Yeah. So, and, and they're very, you know, as like, what'd you call them? The angry <laughs> <Okay>. lawyers? <laughs> Sorry, Keith. Yes. But I said this to his face over the weekend. They're, uh, they're said, super nice. Angry young um, lawyers, but they're, you're not. I know. It's a joke. I, I think I had a question the other day and I just prefaced it with, oh, this is totally a noob question. And Aww. But they were very helpful and they're like, don't worry about it. It's a complicated issue. And they're always willing to help and they're always willing to give advice. And I love that. I love nice that about community. lawyers. I just, mm-hmm. you know. I find lawyers are very generous with their knowledge and their time, and especially if you actually put it out there. So many lawyers don't have a place to put those questions. So I'm glad to hear about that. So I want to go back and ask you a couple more quick questions before we close this segment, just money-wise. Okay. So 135 a year, so let's say $11 a month for lawyer slack is what you paid or are paying. Um, $12, $8 a month for Office 365, I Correct. take it. Um, Smokeball is about... Uh, I got a deal because I whittled them down to okay. ninety nine dollars a month. I think they're like one thirty a All right. month. So a hundred dollars a month ish for mm-hmm. practice management. Um, what do you do your time in billing in? Smokeball. In smokeball. Okay. Yep. So it does time billing, case management, document assembly, mm-hmm. document management, and you're paying. Oh, uh, Smith AI. Uh, they're about. They're a little more expensive now because they mm-hmm. handle. I don't know how many calls they handle now, but they gave me a plan that's like two hundred dollars a month. But when okay. you compare that with paying a receptionist yeah. nine to five to sit at your desk or sit at a desk, it's right. no, definitely it's, better. It is a hard thing. I, that's a conversation I have a lot with lawyers. They're like, 250 a month. I'm like, yeah, what are you going to pay a human? I mean, yeah. you're not going to get a human for 250 a month at, a, at your desk all the time. And what if you don't want to have a desk like you? You want to be mobile. Yeah. yeah, that's the one thing I would, I mean, I've only been out for three months, so I'm not an expert by any means, but maybe this is the business 
entrepreneur in me yeah. that says you have to look at your time and how much it's worth. So even if you're billing, you know, you're a new attorney and you say, oh, well, I only want to bill like $200 an hour. You have to think of everything that you could be doing to make money and make those billable hours, or are you going to be wasting time? So if you want to look into like a virtual assistant or a paralegal or someone who can contract that work out, if it's cheaper to pay someone $50 an hour as a paralegal to draft and file a complaint, it saves you how much time to go make money other w- right. elsewhere. So I think that's one thing that it's tough because in the beginning you're thinking, well, I want to save all this money and I don't want to spend money. But you sort of, and the old adage is true, you have to spend money to make money. Yeah, no, it's totally true. Well, let's take a quick break, listen to a message from some sponsors, and I'm going to come back and ask you a few more questions. If you're missing calls, appointments, and potential clients, it's time to work with Nexa Professional. More than just an answering service, Nexa's virtual receptionists are available 24-7 to schedule appointments, qualify leads, respond to emails, integrate with your firm's software, and much more. Nexa ensures your clients have the experience they deserve. Give them a call at 800-267-9371 or visit them at nexa.com forward slash podcast for a special offer. Artificial intelligence won't outpace lawyers anytime soon, but lawyers who use AI are already outpacing lawyers who do not. With Ross Intelligence, lawyers conducting legal research leverage AI to get to the heart of legal issues fast. Ask a question on the Ross Legal Research platform and Ross will return on point case law. Go to rossintelligence.com today and get a 14-day free trial. Use promo code LEGALTALK for 10% off. Okay, we're back with Philip Moriello of Arate Law. Philip was just telling us kind of a rundown of your monthly costs for running your solo small practice. Mm-hmm. And we were at under 250, I think. Mm-hmm. No, it was two, 200-ish for Smith.ai, which is your virtual receptionist, and you think it's worth every penny. Yeah. About $100 for Smokeball. Totally mm-hmm. worth it. Helps you get every keep everything in one place. Office 365 is a few bucks. Do you have Acrobat or anything for Adobe PDF manipulation? Uh, I just signed up for Acrobat. Okay. Because I had to edit some document for e-filing. Yep. So another thirteen or fifteen dollars a month for that. So you're running your whole practice. Let's just say for under five hundred dollars a month. Mm-hmm. And are you easily covering that in billable hours? Oh yeah. Good. Yeah. It, it it's not it's not that bad when yeah. you look at it, especially <laughs> if you work out of your own home. Plus. Professional liability insurance, okay, fifty good. bucks a month. Lawyers mutual. No kidding. Yeah, everyone complains so much about expensive, how expensive it is. Nah, if there's a program called Strong Start, so it's fifty dollars a month for new attorneys and solo attorneys. Oh, great! So, awesome, very good advice. My next question was going to be, oh, where do you meet your clients? Where do I meet them? Yeah, like, like if a meet, if you don't have an office. You've said you, uh, you work from your home office. This is a question I get all the time, especially mm-hmm. someone who doesn't, who wants to go out on their own, but that's a big concern they have. Where do you meet your clients? I meet them at this lovely bar center. So true. Not everyone has a bar center, though. Um, I have to say San Diego's bar center and its member lounge and its meeting rooms are really amazing. Do you have your mail delivered here? I don't. You know that's a free service? I do. Okay. So that's great. So you meet your clients here, maybe... Mm-hmm a coffee shop if you must or wherever you meet them. And how are you getting your clients? Uh, It's mostly referrals right now, but I'm starting to see more traffic to my website, which is nice. I'm starting to see, uh, I just had a consult through someone who contacted me through uh, my chat. And the nice thing about Wix is you can set it up that if you book, I think you have a, a page that is booking online, so you can set it up and they go into your calendar. So I booked a consult. Uh, I just started with Convert IT Marketing. They're a Google PPC company for attorneys. Um, So we'll see where that goes. They just started a week ago, so PPC takes a while for Mm -hmm. it to kind of... About six months before you can see results. Starts to like gear up for a little bit. It doesn't happen immediately. Um, So yeah, referrals, a little bit of marketing. Website is huge. Make sure you have a good website that people can find and it looks really nice nice and professional. Um, It's critical. Yeah, and... uh, that's basically the, the main sources. I mean, I'm sure that's the main sources for every attorney. And when you talk to another young lawyer and you, they say, well, how did you do it? Or what's the one thing you didn't know that you wish you knew now? I know you're only three months in, but you're pretty sage 
for having three months of soloness behind you. What are mm. some of the tips or advice that you would, I mean, you've given us a lot of great advice, you know, mm. know where your money is better spent or your time, know where your time is better spent by put the right technologies in place, even if it means making an uncomfortable switch at first. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely have phases set up for when you're firm starts to build and and build quickly um, because you don't want to be caught flat footed and you don't want to not be prepared or miss a case or miss a client because you weren't ready or you weren't ready to take stuff on. Um, Have a lot of that stuff waiting in the wings. You don't necessarily have to pay for it, but you can say this is a resource that when I hit X amount of clients or X amount of revenue, I know I'm going to tap into so that if I have extra work, I'll just assign it over here and I'll get it taken care of or, you know, things that will make your life easier. And the other big piece of information, and this actually was because I listened to one of your episodes about the eight commandments of getting paid or. Yeah. With Marco Brown. That was a good um, one. And it's hard for new solos. And I know it's really hard. You don't want to hear this, but get money up front, get a retainer. It makes it a whole lot easier when it comes to client relationships. Um, And I think. Mark even talked about that. It's bad when you have to start chasing clients and looking for money. Um, So I would say that it also gives you the peace of mind that, you know, the money's there and it's coming in and don't be afraid. This was something someone in lawyer smack told me, you make more money off the cases you don't take than the ones you do. And I've turned down a fair amount of kind of duds in the past month alone of clients that you look at and say, okay, your gut tells you, your gut tells you they're not the right client. It's not worth pursuing. Yeah. They're not sure what they want. So you don't want to try and just chase the money. Yeah. So it's, those are hard things I know for solos to hear turning down money or asking for money up front, but it's the smart way to go. It's the smart way to go. Did you have a business plan when you started? I mean, Um, an official one. I know you had a business plan in your mind and you had worked on it really hard, but did you actually have an official business plan? I did. I had like financials. You did? Like vague financials. Wow. Yeah. Lawyers don't do good math. No, I know. They're not known for math. (laughs) I'm not known for math either. My sister is the CPA. So I got the lawyer aspect. She got the numbers aspect. That's awesome. Another question for you. You planning to grow or do you like being solo and you think, oh, I'm going to stay solo forever? No, I plan on growing. Um, That sort of was in my business plan of, I think there's and I'm not trying to be facetious or over ambitious, but I think there's a better way to practice legal and especially marrying technology with the legal world right now. You can uh, do law a lot better. And I'm starting to see there's great law firms here in San Diego that are doing it really well. Um, So yeah, I want to grow it eventually to start hiring people and find a nice office space and be a firm that's established, well-established here for many years to come. So I love that. Very ambitious. Very, it's going to happen. I hope so. So I was thinking maybe you'll come back in like six or so months and we can see how far you've come. Sounds great. Doesn't it? Okay. Um, Anything else you want to make sure and say before we call it a podcast? No, just freelanceattorneyforhire.com if you want to learn more, if you ever want to reach out to me. um, That's my freelance site. And then arate.law is the firm website. So. And are you on any of the social media? Do you use social media at all? I do. Okay. Um, That's another tool I use, later.com. That's my Instagram scheduling. L-A-T-E-R? Yep. Oh, oh, for um, for scheduling posts and stuff. Yep. And what's your Instagram handle? Uh, It's just Arate Law APC. And what about Twitter? I don't use Twitter as much because I feel like you're just kind of shooting tweets off into the the abyss. Right, until you've got a following. Yeah, until you have a following. Instagram is great, mostly because of how much traffic it's getting right now. And how much people are interacting with stuff on Instagram yeah. and you can really create a brand there and geo tag it and all that stuff. There's just, it's just the best social media out there right now. We all like pretty pictures. We all love pretty pictures. So simple. I, I don't remember the last time I logged into Facebook, so. I'm uh, not a good Facebook user. I keep it there. I'll tell you the reason I use Facebook more than anything or keep it, I should say, because I don't really use it. And it's a sad reason is when there is some sort of disaster Mm. I like knowing that my friends are safe <laughs> or that their kids are, you know, so that's really the only reason I keep Facebook. And usually the only reason I go on is to so-and-so mark themselves safe. In Florida, we have a lot of hurricanes mm. and stuff like that. They should have marked safe from the Santa Ana winds. Yes. Oh, my God. You people don't know of heat. Well, although I have learned that, man, those Santa Ana winds is what kicks up all those fires. 
fires or a lot mm-hmm. of the fires. It's really interesting. For me, as a sort of cross-country hopper, the whole natural disaster, you know, you come to California like, whew, no hurricanes and no tornadoes. And then I'm like, what? Was that an earthquake? <laughs> so anyway, well, thanks everyone for listening. And um, Philip, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your very sage advice with us. Very much appreciate it. Everyone knows how they can find friend or follow you, as I always say. So thanks again for listening to another episode of New Solo on Legal Talk Network. If you like what you've heard today, give us a good rating on iTunes and subscribe using your favorite podcast app, whether it's iTunes or not. We'll see you next time. And remember, you're not alone. You're a new solo. Thanks for listening to New Solo with host Adriana Linares. Tune in again to learn more about how to successfully run your new practice solo here on Legal Talk Network. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer.